in this video I'm going to go over isometric uh, pictorials. This PowerPoint has isometric and oblique pictorials, but I'm only going to go over the isometric in this particular video. All right, so what is a pictorial drawing? It's a 2D illustration of a 3D object. It shows three faces of an object in one view. All right, there's three different types. There's the isometric, there's the oblique, and the perspective. All right, so we're going to start with isometric. Isometric means equal measure. Three adjacent faces on a cube will share a single point. Edges converge at one point will appear as 120 degree angles and then 30 degree angles from the horizon. So whenever you're looking at this, uh, you're going to see that this line is going to represent the height this one would be the depth, and this one would be the width. Of course, on a cube, they're all the same, but uh, when you're drawing them, you'll see that yours won't be just a cube as you're drawing them. All right, so first you need to know what is the front view. All right, so recommendations on how to select the front view are you want to look for the most natural position or use. It shows the best shape and characteristic contours, the longest dimension, the fewest hidden lines, and the most stable and natural position. And really the main one is this longest dimensions um, and the fewest hidden lines. That's the main ones. I think those really should be at the top because those are kind of like number one and number two of the rules, I would think. All right, so like this one here, this would be considered your best front view. And the main reason is it is the longest view. And then we would pick this side instead of the other side because right here, these lines would be represented as hidden lines, uh, dotted lines that show a cut out from your object would be showing on the other side. So this is why it's the longest and it has the fewest hidden lines. It's also uh, the most natural if you look at it. That's how you would want to see it, right? Okay, so now once you've picked your front view, um, I guess what are the rest of the views? So we've picked our front view. So this one would be considered my top view. This side is the right side. If you look at a different orientation, this one is still your front, the top, and this is considered your left side. Right, to draw these isometric, uh, some people will use the box method. Right, the box, box method is a sketching technique used to maintain proportionality. It starts with a sketcher envisioning an object contained within an imaginary box. So here's the object, and first they draw these construction lines just to uh, envision what it would be sitting inside. Right, so this object would be sitting inside of that. It also helps with your proportion and estimation by drawing that uh, imaginary box. All right, it's good sketching requires a sense of proportion and the ability to estimate the size, distance, angles, and other spatial relationships. For this class, you're going to be using isometric grid paper, and that helps a lot uh, with making sure your object doesn't end up looking like that. All right, so the following examples that I'm going to be showing you um, are steps used to create isometric sketches of simple geometric objects. They include tonal shading techniques. So the first one is uh, this object because it is a little bit easier. Right? There's nothing coming out from it. All right, so we're going to construct the box. Notice this right here is isometric grid paper. And you can find this paper if you need to print it off. You can find it um, on Blackboard under Drawing Sheets. Right, so first they make their imaginary box. And they're ready to draw the object inside of it now. Right, the first thing that they're showing is they're uh, finding where these points are. They're going to measure and then count the boxes. Notice if you look at this, they look like little bitty cubes. All right, so if I look at an isometric paper, this line right here would be that front line. 
and then notice these are the back. Hopefully you can kind of see these little cubes inside of the paper. Right. So they count, they figure out uh, that it's one, two, three, and then from the bottom it's one and a half, so that they can go ahead and make that diagonal line. There's really no other way to know where to do that diagonal line other than drawing your straight ones first and then connecting them. Okay, Drawing the object lines on the outside of the cube and then filling in. Okay, in this case, there are no inside faces to worry about. All right, so you're going to decide the light source position and add tonal shading to two of the three faces. All right. So any of the faces going this direction is going to have that um, horizontal and vertical lines. And then the other one, notice how uh, there are two different types of shading here to show that they're facing different directions. All right, so the shading option is to use parallel lines drawn closely together on a face. And then you can increase that contrast by doing cross hashing, hatching lines uh, to make one of the faces darker. Again, vertical and uh, horizontal. Horizontal, vertical. And then this one would just be uh, horizontal. Okay, so let's do another one. You're going to construct the box first, uh, but first you need to figure out how big is the box. All right, so it's one, two, three over. All right, and then it's one, two, and then one, two up. So the height is two, the width is two, and the depth is three. All right, so three units wide. Oh, I guess I switched the, the depth and the width. But, uh, so it's, notice they're drawing their little imaginary box. All right, now you're going to use points and construction lines to identify corners and edges of object faces that occur on the surface of the box. Okay, so notice this area here was two. So we have one, two. This one here is just one. So they've drawn a little box here. And then this one's one. So they've drawn a box here. This particular face and this one is not uh, actually on the outside of the box. So they're just drawing the outside faces right now. Right, before sketch becomes too congested with construction lines, trace the visible edges with the object lines. Right, so notice they're just drawing those object lines of the ones on the outside of the box. Okay, now use points and construction lines to identify the corners and edges of the object faces that occur inside the box. Okay, and if you're using isometric paper and following along, just uh, pause as I hit uh, the enter button to show the new lines. Just pause in between as you're trying this. All right, so trace out remaining visible edges with the object lines. All right, now it's time to tonal shape. So notice on this one, we've got some uh, horizontal lines, and then they've got actually some diagonal lines in there as well. Okay, so decide the light source position and add tonal shading to two of the three faces. A shading option is to use parallel lines, draw closely together on a face, increase contrast by cross hatching the lines on the darkest face. So you can even go diagonal or horizontal or vertical. So here's an example of um, an isometric sketch. Notice they've got some tonal shading in here. All right, now we have example three. This is if you're wanting to do circles. All right, um, 
Sketching with isometric circles, circular features, and cylindrical forms are common in engineering designs and appear as ellipses in isometric pictorials. Okay, so here's the next example. Use points and construction lines to box in the location where the cylinder's circular face occurs. Okay, so they're first going to draw that imaginary box. Next, connect the four corners with diagonal construction lines. Okay, so now you know where the center point's going to be because you've drawn those construction lines to find it. Okay, so tangent points are identified by placing marks at the middle point locations along the four outside edges and two-thirds of the distance from the box center to each outside corner on the fourth uh, on the four diagonals. That's really confusing the way that they say that when all they're doing is just saying uh, it this particular uh, cylinder is its diameter is three by three. So we know that it's going to be one, two, three across, right? One, two, three across this way. Right? It's a diameter. It's going to have to be the same size. So all they're doing here is just putting dots where it's going to touch, where it's going to tangent those construction lines. All, right? all those words, that's all it's saying. This is where it's going to touch. It's three by three. It's a diameter. They have to be the same. All right. So this is where we're going to try to draw and connect those lines. And do the best you know, circle we can. Okay, so four individual construction lines, arc segments, are then drawn tangent to the marks that were created in the previous step. Okay, so what they did now is they're trying to draw these lines so that we can try to get that circle or that ellipse perfect. Okay, so notice they just drew them um, like halfway here. All right. And then here was the two-thirds that they were talking about. We're trying to get this ellipse. I guess I shouldn't say perfect circle. It's really an ellipse. Okay, and connect it. All right, so the construction line ellipse is then traced over with an object line. Okay, so we have ellipse. The process is repeated where the other end of the cylinder occurs. Okay, so they're doing the construction line. They're doing the uh, where it's going to tangent. Where's the center point? Okay, drawing their little where the ellipse is going to go to. Should be noted that only part of the second ellipse will be visible. So I'm going to draw the part uh, that is going to be seen. Use construction lines to connect the two ellipses and to identify where the object line for the second ellipse will begin and end. And then trace out the final object. Add tonal shading to curved surface by drawing the straight lines between the elliptical spaces. Vary the distance between the lines will give the illusion of reflected light. Okay. All right, and then here is uh, just an example of an isometric uh, sketch in history. All right, I'm going to do some practice problems, I guess you could say. I'm going to have um, a couple of videos where I'm going to show how I do an uh, isometric sketch on paper. I do mine a little different. I actually do not use the box method. So I'm going to show my method, um, how I do it, and you can just use whichever one is best for you.